All right. Hello, everybody. It's the Meister from Brews and Tunes. Cheers. Uh, very excited today. I am chatting with uh, bassist uh, Ashley Wells of uh, Bitch Switch, as well as multiple other projects. Uh, Ashley, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. It was awesome. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, and I was fortunate enough to uh, to see you. Uh, we were just chatting before the interview started. I, I was fortunate mm -hmm. enough to see you not too long ago, the, a few months ago, with my wife and I went and saw um, you were playing with Sun Lord, and mm -hmm. you guys opened for Destruction and Nervoso. And man, what a killer show that was. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I know that tour finished up not too long ago, um, mm -hmm. but uh, your kind of your normal gig is uh, Bitch Switch, which is a just a stellar, stellar hardcore band um, out, of, out of New York. Um, so I was curious, kind of what, what do you got going on right now? What are your, what are your uh, projects? What do you have happening currently? Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, right now when I got home, I kind of wanted to, you know, regroup with Bitch Switch um, because we, with just taking a little time off, we wanted to get back to just kind of writing new stuff and just kind of booking up our, our summer and, and fall, kind of get some more shows going. Nice. Um, so right now, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just kind of doing my scheduling um, and just seeing where, um, you know, my other little side projects, whatever other kind of little gigs they have going on and just enjoying, you know, summer. Nice, so. nice. And that's one thing that, yeah, you you get involved with a lot of different musical projects, which is cool. Mm -hmm. and, and kind of different genres too, you know, metal and punk and rock and roll and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, even kind of more progressive stuff like, you know, you're, yeah. you're, you've been in a Primus cover band before, I know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you've, it sounds like you've got a vast array of musical tastes and talent mm -hmm. as well, which is, which is really cool to see. Um, kind of, you know, what, uh, I guess, curious you know you mentioned with bitch switch you you guys are starting to get some shows lined up things like that what's what's the next show what what are you what do you have coming mm -hmm. up soonest yes so um august 6th we're going to be playing in the city um in new in new york city there's a park Tompkins in the square park um mm -hmm. which we're doing it's called a uh, waste fest and uh our friends in urban waste are basically headlining and putting this show together cool. of awesome you know hardcore punk bands from new york um, so yeah, really excited for, for that one coming up next. Nice. Yeah. That sounds like a great show. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's too bad I live so far away. <laughs> yeah, I know. So you got to come out here one day, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. That, man, that sounds like a killer show. Yeah. Um, yeah. very cool. And, and you mentioned also that, uh, writing new material, uh, for Bitch yeah. Switch. Um, do you have a, are, are you guys working on an album or an EP or, uh, yeah, yeah. I think um, we're actually working on, we're going to be doing a split too with um, our other friends in Paralyze, which is really cool. So we're trying to write, um, and they're another, you know, hardcore punk band, writing some more songs. Um, we had a couple setbacks last year. I was actually in a, a bad car accident. I'm fine oh, now. Wow. Um, yeah, so like there was a lot of time off. So we have such a short set right now, but it it works, you know, for punk. Like it's, it's just a short, quick, like short and sweet. So Right now, we're just like, all right, let's get back to just, um, you know, taking July to just work on writing new stuff. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, and the, I know, and I'll, I'll, it'll be included in the link. Uh, there'll be a link in the description uh, below here mm -hmm. uh, under this interview. Um, yeah, the the Bandcamp, um, the, I think there's two songs on, mm -hmm. on Bandcamp currently uh, uh, mm -hmm. on the Bitch Switch page which is great stuff. And yeah, like it's fast, it's, you know, quick songs, but man, it's just really yeah. captures the essence of, uh, I mean, what, what I really liked about it is it, it kind of captures that essence of that old school, hardcore New York punk, but also feels very fresh and new and exciting. And, uh, and just, yeah, it gets you, you know, gets your fist pumping immediately mm -hmm. from like those first notes, um, just yeah. really cool stuff. Um, and there's some really cool live footage, of course, out there of Bitch Switch too. I've seen it on online, but um, yeah, what I was curious, kind of what's the history of the band? Kind of when did the band start? Yeah. Um, how did you get involved? Yeah, um, it's pretty cool because we've all been in a lot of other projects, um, like you know, as far as hardcore and punk goes, um, and everyone just kind of came together. Mandy, um, I don't know, there was a band, the Devachkas, that um, back in the day she was in that was fucking awesome in the city. So she she kind of started the band with um, uh, Rachel, who's a singer, and then uh, Linnea and me, Linnea is a drummer, we both kind of joined in, but we were all kind of doing similar projects. Hmm. Um, and we we started like right before kind of COVID hit, and then like, you know, that kind of set us back because of just the, you know, shutdown and whatever. And 
took a little break, but now we're just finally, um, you know, really getting back to just the groove of everything weekly. And, um, but yeah, it's cool because we all have like different influences too, as far as like the underground scene, like, like you said, like, you know, we have the old school hardcore, we have the punk, we have, you know, the metal, like just different, um, vibes. Cause like, I, I love all different types of music. So we try to just right now we're trying to like make every song just a little bit different. So it's not like all the same kind of genre. Cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And it's, mm-hmm. I, like I said, what I've heard is, is fantastic. I, I really liked it a lot. And uh, yeah, I was hoping, yeah, it, it's exciting to hear that you're doing a split. Is that, it, will that be released on vinyl? Is that, um, yeah, like a yeah, seven inch yeah, or something? I think it's, yeah. I think we're going to do like a seven inch for that. So that Oh, cool. Be. I will definitely be uh, wanting yeah, to get my hands yeah. on that. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, so, and that kind of dovetails, you know, you mentioned, you know, the different genres or different styles of music that you listen to. So I was kind of curious, like you're starting, like, how did you originally get into music? Did you come from a musical family and kind of what was the, uh, you know, kind of your draw towards the bass as well? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I loved music, you know, growing up as a kid, like who doesn't, but like, especially in my house, like my parents were always just blasting all different types of music. Um, huge music lovers. They weren't musicians, but they were just huge lovers. So I got into all different types of music. And um, I basically, I got really into more of the underground stuff, you know, in like middle school, high school, just kind of more metal punk stuff. Um, And I always wanted to start a band and I bought a guitar, um, but it just like didn't stick. Like I took a couple guitar lessons and I was like, this is just, I don't know what it was. It wasn't for me. Um, and I still just had that drive for it, but then it was like, basically, um, you know, I got a late start when I was in my early twenties, basically, um, my boyfriend at the time was a musician and his friends were musicians and they were forming a new band and it was a punk band. And they were like, why don't you just join? We'll just show you the root notes, you know, keep it real simple. And I guess I had some sort of rhythm. I didn't realize. So I just kind of picked up the bass and went right into it. Hmm. So I, essentially was just kind of self-taught. I really had no idea what I was doing, but the guitar player would be like, okay, this is the riff I'm playing. And then I would just do what he was kind of doing. And that's how I just got started. And then the more I played, um, the more I got into just all different styles of playing, like where I was like, I'm playing with the pick. Then I dropped the pick, got really into playing with my hands. Got Then I was like, I want to get into slapping. And just because I'm so into all different styles, um, not just that, it could be like funk and hip hop and dance music and reggae and, you know, um, bossa nova, it could be anything. Like, I'm just trying to just, just keep working on everything. And cool. Cool. Everything. That's really cool. That, yeah. And, and you can mm-hmm. tell w- from your, your, the way you play, yeah, that there's mm-hmm. definitely influence from other styles. And, um, mm-hmm. I mean, even within the same song, you know, to some degree, I think, you know, you can, you can mm-hmm. hear that. Um, and that was one thing that I was really impressed, uh, when I saw you live was it seemed so effortless and that's, you know, always the sign of a good musician, I think is when it's, you know, you can tell the person's having fun up on stage and it doesn't seem like it's work um, necessarily, even though I know you, you know, you're working hard and you've probably, you know, it's taken years to, to, to learn a lot of this stuff, but it just seemed very effortless and very organic, which is, is always cool to see that. And it's, and it was such a tight, um, you know, that particular band that you were playing with, um, it was, it just seemed, you know, especially you and the drummer, just, it was so tight, um, mm. which is always just a joy to watch that kind of playing. Um, yeah. But it's interesting that, I mean, that that was a side thing okay. that you had joined and it's not your usual, because it seemed like, yeah. I mean, it just felt like you guys were, you know, really gelling and really hit it off on stage. But it's interesting yeah. that that's not your, you know, that was kind of more of a hired gun, I guess, in mm-hmm. to some degree. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I always loved like thrash metal kind of stuff. So I was in a thrash metal band uh, back in the day too called Grayskull. So um, I always missed kind of playing that stuff. And I think punk and metal, um, you know, there's a lot of similarities with just, you know, certain things and speed and whatever. So, and just the energy of it that I just, I can go back and forth with that kind of stuff anytime. I just love, you know, nice. stuff. and. Nice. Yeah. As, as far as bass players, who were kind of your big influences, uh, mm-hmm. you know, growing up and, and even now, like who, who kind of are the, right. the, the, the bass players that you, you like to listen to? Yeah. I mean, there's so many because like there's, I guess, from every genre, I could pick a few. Um, I mean, even if we just start with like metal, it's like, you know, like 
like Geezer Butler, you know, obviously like from him to like, you know, uh, like a Steve DiGiorgio, mm. um, you know, any, any of those metal guys that get really proggy and technical death metal, like, you know, like an Evan Brewer, like I like, love all those kind of guys. Um, then you have obviously like, you know, Jocko, um, just um, uh, Les Claypool, you know, like people that are just any other um, kind of Chris Squire, um, Cool. Who else I could name off the top of my head? You know, Steve Harris, of course, um, as far as with just the hands that playing fast like that on metal, that's always like a goal. I want to always do both, you know, not just the pick because I don't feel like you always see the pick and I'm like, I want to do both. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to think who, uh, and then like, even like the, like when it comes to dancey stuff, like funky, like Motown, like James Jamerson, like, so there's just cool. broad, you know, yeah. Yeah, which I... I I, lo I love the all of that all those bass players that you mentioned are all phenomenal yeah. musicians and yeah and yeah. you can hear that in I think in some of you know I, I mean you're definitely your own musician but it, you can hear mm -hmm. some of those influences in the way you play and um, mm -hmm. which is cool um, yeah and I think it's important to have as a musician I, I always love it when I when I talk to musicians and they listen to a lot of different things um, mm -hmm. but you know I, you know why limit yourself um, right. you know, it's kind of you know it's always frustrating i think you know when you talk to certain fans and like they only listen to one thing that's it and they just mm -hmm. have no real understanding yeah. of kind of the, the history of music and, and and you know kind of where people came from and what they listen mm -hmm. to um yeah that's cool so uh you mentioned les claypool and, and you've played in a in a primus tribute band uh mm -hmm. putting time mm -hmm. That, that I mean, he's such an intricate player, and I've heard, yeah. you know, I, I've I've seen some live footage of you playing, and you, man, you really nail it. I I can't imagine it's easy to play mm. uh, Les Claypool's because he's doing so much intricate, interesting things. Um, did that take a long time to learn, or? Yeah, I mean, I'm always like working on that stuff still because I'm not like the main basis. Like what we do is, um, you know, the main basis, Matt, he's doing more of the kind of technical stuff and I'm doing like more of the rhythm kind of, but then we go into jams and that's like the whole like kind of experience with it of like, we go into these crazy jams with two basses. So it's really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's always, Les Claypool has always been inspiring with just like all his techniques and how he plays and stuff. So um, always definitely just, yeah. And it's just so much fun. It's like, it's just a fun band to just, get up and play that stuff because you could be into metal or you could be into more proggy or jammy dancey stuff and people just rock out and have a good time yeah 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 really cool stuff yeah like like i said the footage i've seen was yeah you guys sounded amazing and mm -hmm. i can't remember which song it was it might have been my name is mud i can't remember i saw it mm -hmm. some, somewhere on youtube this was months ago but yeah it was mm -hmm. it was incredible it was really um you know because anytime you hear like oh this band's gonna cover primus like you know oh, mm -hmm. oh really are they and then yeah. you hear like oh wow just, this band can cover primus um yeah. so yeah i thought i was really impressed by that i thought that was really fantastic um <clears throat> that's cool that's that's really cool um so uh, how did you get involved with that band um with them well i'm lucky enough to also be a bartender at the music venues out here um oh. i was at a club revolution for a while which was this awesome club that unfortunately did not make it through the shutdown. But um, I also work at the Paramount. And um, so I've been lucky enough to, you know, meet a lot of musicians as far as um, at Revolution, because it's more of a, um, a smaller space, like the bands, you know, coming right to you, coming to the bar. So just meeting people. And I think that's kind of how I met those guys. I saw them play the first time at Revolution and I was like, holy shit, you guys sound just like fucking put like Primus. Like yeah. sound just like them. Like if, you know, if Primus wasn't around, this they should be, they should be making a ton of money touring the world, these guys. So that's why when um they basically just invited me to jam with them and I was like, all right. So I just got up and I would just do like a whole set with them. Oh, cool. So, wow. Yeah, so now we actually have, I'm actually, I was just talking to um, one of them yesterday actually about, they're doing a fest um, in September. There's this big fest called Froggy Days um, upstate. They have these cool music festivals. So they're going to be doing that. So I'll probably go do that, that festival with them. Oh, so, nice. Very like, cool. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. great. That's great yeah. news. Um, yeah. do, do you enjoy playing live? Is that something that um, you, mm -hmm. you enjoy the, the live experience? 
Yeah, like at first, um, when I was younger, I was definitely like more shy and I was kind of like kind of hiding like in the back, which was funny because like people would be like, oh, you're, you know, go up front more, you're a girl, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't really care for that, like attention, whatever. But then I realized like, you know what, it like, as I became more confident as a player, I was like, you know what, it looks better, like stand up, you know, don't be like hiding in the back. <laughs> so now um, I definitely love playing live more now. And, and I used to be like really nervous and I'm still, ner I mean, I think everyone's a little nervous. I mean, if you're not, you're probably a little too cocky you have to have a little but uh right. go up there and I'm just I'm happy I'm just like having fun looking at my bandmates looking at the crowd and and so I love that's, it that's mm -hmm. cool that's cool yeah um I, I was curious the um you know speaking of live you know so mentioned you know you were playing with Sunlord you guys toured with Devastation or Destruction rather and and Nervosa that must have been a pretty cool experience, um, you know, touring with those two bands in particular and yeah. just, you know, high, that high energy. And it seemed like there was a, um, you know, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it just seemed like there was a, a, a good camaraderie you know, with, with everybody. It seemed like there was a good, um, you know, good mm -hmm. communication. It seemed like everybody was having a good time. And just from pictures I've seen, you know, like yeah. of the tour, you know, from Destruction and Nervosa, mm -hmm. you know, online, you know, posting pictures of everybody in you know, all the bands, you know, hanging out together after shows and before shows. And it seemed like it was a good, good group of people that, that had a lot of fun um, and of course played their hearts out. But um, mm -hmm. I would imagine that was a pretty, that was a pretty good experience, you know, touring with, with those. Oh, yeah. Bands. I mean, like, it was amazing. I mean, Destruction is, like, legends. Like, so, first of all, just to, like, say we were opening up for them. Yeah. Um, and, and then Nervosa. I mean, they're fucking badass. Like, I mean, so inspiring to see when you see women that are doing what you're doing up there, you know? Um, so I was, like, I was so grateful to just be opening up for both of them. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, and everybody was so cool. Like there was just like the whole tour, you know, everybody was just, sometimes you don't get to spend a lot of time with each other. Cause like, you know, you're driving so much, you get to the venue and then they're doing sound checks and then we're going to get food or whatever it is and you miss each other. But whenever we did have like our conversations, like we were all just super cool. And, um, and yeah, no, I'm, I'm hoping we all kind of just stay in touch. Um, because it was really it was awesome meeting all of them so. yeah nice yeah it was for me it was a thrill just yeah you know like you yeah said, instruction does not come to america very often yeah. so and i think it was mm -hmm. if I, I don't know if they've ever come here to utah maybe they did back in the 80s but i don't you know because mm -hmm. i think even Schremer said something about like yeah i've never <laughs> been here before so it was cool to actually see them live and and um yeah hopefully they'll come back and, and uh, you know yeah yeah and, get a tour with them again that'd be cool yeah um do you have any does does um speaking of touring does bitch switch have any plans of you know mm -hmm. I, I know you primarily play in new york but yeah. do you have any plans of kind of getting out and and touring the, mm -hmm. the states more yeah i mean we were talking about maybe doing like a more like mini tri-state thing i think kind of to start with um and yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure as far as like a big tour yet, but I would love to. I'm, I'm always down to do stuff like that. So depending like if they're if they're up for it or not, but we should definitely, I definitely want to, you know, branch out a little, little bit more because uh, Long Island's a little bit kind of a small, you know, vibe here with just, you know, it's like separate where it's like you're playing Long Island or you're playing the city or Brooklyn. It's, there's a, it's a whole different world as far as the boroughs go. So I would right, right. love to just get into more boroughs and just yeah get out of new york a little bit so nice mm -hmm. nice well and i would imagine that I've, I've never been there to be honest um i would imagine the music scene is just especially in the you know in the city itself it's got to be just to some degree almost overwhelming there's so much happening all the time but it's yeah. also got to be such a cool just experience to be able to see so many different bands and local bands i mean you know probably you know, constant every night. There's probably cool mm -hmm. shows happening all the time. Um, mm -hmm. And so did you grow up there? Did you, is that mm -hmm. where you grew up? So yeah, yeah. No, I, I grew up here. And um, yeah, I mean, I was always going to shows out here when I was younger. And um, and it's great. I mean, like there's all different types of music. It tends to like be one of those places, though, where there is a lot of like the tribute bands, which mm -hmm. oh, I'm not even not like, obviously, I'm doing this tribute band thing with them. But um sometimes there's a lot more of that you see um 
but there's all different types of original, you know, music here on Long Island. And I love, I just love living here. I mean, just as far as New York goes, because we have, it's expensive, um, but we have everything. It's like, I can go to the beach. I can go to the mountains and go upstate and hike. I can go to the city. Like I'm right central from everything. So nice, nice. Yeah. yeah. And there's such a, I mean, musically, you know, both metal and punk and you know, mm-hmm. hardcore, there's such a rich history there. It's got to be cool to just be part of that whole world. Uh, I would imagine yeah. it, you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, yeah. I don't know if you run into, you know, I mean, I'm thinking about all these bands, you know, like, you know, you know, you go back like all the thrash metal bands and the punk, metal, you know, punk and, you know, all, yeah. all that stuff. I don't know if, if you see these people out and about anymore, but uh, it's just got to be such a cool uh you know that that vibe was always so cool like what i've read about and and you know talking to other musicians um that mm-hmm. that you know have grown up in that same area that you live in and just mm-hmm. you know all these you know clubs and all the cool shows happening all the time and yeah you know, there's mm-hmm. these amazing bands that you can just walk in and you know in a bar yeah. and there's you know you know so spoiled here like we really <laughs> and i think that's like you know when the pandemic hit and we lost a lot of that you you realize like how spoiled we are, you know, now that everything's kind of come back, just really being appreciative of music. So yeah, definitely. Um, I was curious, the, the writing process for, for Bitch Switch, is that a, mm-hmm. is that a collaborative effort or does, you know, is somebody, mm-hmm. you know, a guitar player coming up with riffs and then you all kind of jump in or how, how do you guys write? Mm-hmm. What's kind of your process for writing? Yeah. Yeah. It's like interesting. Cause I noticed like every musician is different. Every band's different. Um, so it's always kind of figuring out what's the best method. And it's funny because we just have a few songs, so we're still kind of figuring each other out in that way. But um, I think kind of like when I went into it, they had already, that's what it was. They had already had one song already. Like I joined after the, the three of them had already started it. Um, so that was like one song that, um, you know, Mandy, the guitar player had, had written out. Um, I had like a whole like uh, just bunch of like riffs kind of like thrown on the back burner that I just jammed on in the past and so I kind of presented them those riffs I was like what do you think about this and then I kind of like put some of them in a song or like or like Mandy would collaborate with her riffs and we would kind of you know and then we would work with with you know the drums and as far as like okay is this going to be a good beat for this or that and and we're figuring out the vocals kind of uh I guess kind of last in that way but sometimes you know Rachel has like uh some lyrics and she's like I want it to sound like this you know like a chanty thing and so we're okay so we try to like maybe write it and play it that way um so yeah so every time is different like I mean the other day like literally last week we rehearsed and um I had some riff or two and I was kind of showing them and then they were like okay that's cool so then Lenny just started jamming on drums and I was like yeah keep doing that because like if you keep playing different drum beats I'm gonna keep playing and try it in different ways and see which way this is gonna make the most sense so cool that sounds yeah it sounds like it's a very Uh, organic process yeah it's it's more organic yeah that's cool that's really cool um nice and you mentioned, uh, so you guys are working on some new stuff. Do, do you have a, do you have a timeline of when you think that, that, especially that split, you know, when that's coming out? Yeah. Um, I don't know when that split's going to come out. Um, I'm not sure how many songs we're doing for it. Hmm. Um, so I got to ask them with that whole thing, but definitely want to probably write a couple more. So maybe, I don't know, maybe in like a few months, that would be the goal to kind of a couple months from now to kind of get that going. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And any any long term goals with the band? Or is you know you guys planning on doing like a full album at some point, or mm-hmm. um, you know kind of what what are your what are your long term yeah. goals? Yeah, yeah. I think we want to do all of that. We want to do the full kind of album right now because we just have we have well we basically only we recorded a few songs. Um, we only had like two of them mastered. That was the ones that we put on the band camp. Um, and I think we kind of want to like re record everything again so we'll probably like, re-record those and, and do like a new album with that or put those on like the the split so just oh, okay. not put the yeah nice so. that's very cool very cool mm-hmm. um yeah. <clears throat> nice mm-hmm. uh i don't know if um I don't, I, I don't know if you're a beer drinker at all uh craft beer drinker but uh so my page of course is bruising tunes 
uh, where I pair beer with, you know, craft beer with metal and punk and, and hard rock and things like that. So uh, my, my final question for you today is, uh, um, so it's a, you know, Friday night, Ashley's hanging out at home. Uh, what, what beer are you drinking or what drink are you drinking? What album are you spinning? Oh, what albums? Yeah, I mean, I do, I am a beer drinker, beer, liquor, usually, like beer shots kind of thing, usually. Okay. Um, with the craft beer, it's interesting, like, I, I do love, like, I love when we travel, like, because I love traveling, I love trying, like, the craft local beers. Cool. Um, but I don't, like, I don't know if there's, like, a specific one I could think of off the top of my head of, like, which, like, generally something that's similar to kind of, like, a Pilsner, like a Stella. I know okay. Stella obviously it's a but you know something similar in that way as far as a beer goes and then like shots of like usually like whiskey or tequila is usually my thing nice. um, and then music I mean it depends like if it's like a Friday night if I was just like hanging out with friends at like a house we would be putting on like party music to be honest like we wouldn't maybe just be like you know, like I said, like, I, I think a lot of people that are so like metal or punk, that's like their main thing. But I'm like, I love everything. I'd rather just put on like a, like a girl talk or DJ Cumberbund, uh, where it's like a mashup of just different stuff, fun, silly stuff to just kind of hang out and, you know, whatever. Cool. Right uh, on. Yeah. Nice. So, I love it. Mm -hmm. Um, well, uh, Ashley, thank you so much for chatting with me. This has been a pleasure, uh, for those watching, you know, definitely check out bitch switch. Uh, there's a link below. Uh, you will not be sorry. Some really killer, uh, punk music. I, I really enjoy it a lot. So, uh, definitely check that out. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Yeah. yeah.